So our host for the day today is Mariama Koli. And I think the picture depicts a lot. If you look at the picture, you will see a powerful woman, a woman who is great. And underneath, I can say Mariama is a gender right activist. And she won U.S. Hollywood International Golden Film Award, outstanding up in 2020. She is an international award-winning actress. She is a radio presenter. I need not to even mention that. It's clearly manifested on the picture, yeah? And she is the founder of Studio 11. And one of the things that she achieved as an actress as well, there is a film called Act uh, Mivit. I don't know, it's Wall of Right? Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> so probably I will urge everyone to go and watch out for that that maybe. You will see what that phenomenal woman has has done in that program. So on that note, I would like to hand over to Mariama. Um, please join me to welcome her on this platform and to anchor this for her for the ladies. Thank you very much. Over to you, Madam Mariama. Thank you so much, Sally, for, and good afternoon to our able guest today. I'm really honored to host this. Now, when Salifu reached out, and of course, some of their members, Ibrahim and the crew, I was like, I'm very new in finance. We in the media are very biased because we hardly talk about finance. We don't even have a radio program on finance at all. And I hated math so much that I've related it to financial processing which I have learned that is, is quite different. It's not just about the numbers, it's also about management and more. So I'm really excited today to host this forum. Uh, I will learn from you all, but also it's a new platform to also interact with all of you women as we are celebrating International Women's Month. You are all powerful women in finance, uh, taking up you know, positions in fields that are you know, led by men. So I'm really honored to host this um, gathering today online, which is very important. So we'll just go on um, to introduce our, our panelists who are our special guests today. Um, so we get to know a little bit about them and their background as well, though they would you know, share their personal journeys and their profile with us, but it's also good to just give a brief background on who they are and, you know, how much success that they have achieved for themselves. We'll start with um, Ms. Betty Marron, who has 13 years experience in auditing and finance and currently the finance director NAWIC, group finance controller, SN Power, um, AS Noe, and international experience with uh, KPMG Noe. Audit Manager, KPMG Norway. Audit Senior Associates, KPMG Norway. Um, junior Audit Associate, KPMG Norway. And she's really passionate about leadership and finance development. So thank you so much for being with us today, Betty Mara. It's an honor to have you here. And then next we'll move on to Ms. Fatma Tadiba, who is the founder and CEO of Diba Freak. Financial Advisor, Marion Lynch, Associate Financial Market Sales, SCB at the Hub in Nigeria, FX and ALMG General Dealer, SCB Gambia, Financial Planning Advisor, GT Bank uh, Gambia, Independent Consultant, YBMS uh, Partners. She's also very passionate in um, entrepreneurship and leadership. Thank you so much for making time to be here, Madam Diba. Thank, Thank you, you so much. And um, last but not the least, we have Fatu Jalo, who is the CEO of Takaful Insurance, the Gambia, and country manager, Enterprise Life Assurance, head of domestic banking, Ecobank Gambia, head of local corporate, Ecobank Gambia, credit risk manager, SMG, SME, uh, SCB Bank Gambia, and Relationship Manager, Corporate, and SMEs, SCB Gambia, and um, important member of the Gambia Insurance Community. Ladies, welcome to this forum. Thank you. Yes, so we'll just go straight on to um, the conversation today like um, the theme itself has highlighted. Today our discussion is going to be on 
women in finance. So before we get there, maybe um, I would love or our beautiful viewers who are watching us currently or are on this platform would love to know a little bit about your background. So we'll start with you, Betty Maro. Can you just introduce yourself a little bit and tell us your experience over the past few years working within the finance? Yes, good afternoon, um, Mariam, and good afternoon to my sister, Fatu and uh, Fatumata. Um, thank you very much for having me on this platform. Um, yes, my background in finance actually started in audit. So I have my, both my bachelor's and my master's in accounting and audit. And I started my career with KPMG uh, as an auditor. So I had, that's where my, my, the majority of my training came from. Uh, and then I moved over to work in financial control as a financial controller about four years ago. <laughs> Uh, before joining now the, my current employer uh, mm -hmm. from December 2020, working as a, 2020, sorry, working as a finance director. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. I think you've achieved a lot in your career over the past few years. And we are so honored to have you here today to get into this important discussion. Now, let's move on to Fata Jalo. Fata, can you also do a brief introduction of yourself and you know, some of the work that you've done over the past few years? Um, good afternoon. Um, thank you very much, Mariama. I am honored. <laughs> to be on this platform um, and good afternoon to the fellow women and men on the platform. I'm really um, honored. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, <laughs> I'm a banker. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have, uh, I started working as a banker uh, when I was in, when I was studying in, in UK. I worked for Barclays Bank mm -hmm. for about five years before I moved back home, worked for Standard Chartered, then mm -hmm. Echo Bank. And in 2015, I moved slightly within the sector mm -hmm. into the insurance industry. And um, I've been I've worked for Enterprise Life for five years and recently moved to Takafo yes. um, as their CEO. Mm -hmm. So I'm privileged <laughs> to be invited to this platform. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Madam Jalu. We are really honored to have you here. And also congratulations to you and all your great achievements over the past few years in your sector. And then last but not the least, we have another Fatmata uh, Diba. So we have two Fatus here. But yes, Fatmata Diba, uh, <laughs> briefly introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your background too, please. Thank you so much, Mariama. Mm -hmm. Thank you, everyone around. Thank you, the panelists. I come from a tribe called the Body Bunkers. <laughs> so naturally, I'm a woman in finance just because that tribe is known for loving money, yeah. knowing how to deal with it, <laughs> and knowing how to manage it. Growing yeah. up, I had traits of being trustworthy and being accountable. So mm -hmm. I've always been managing money for my family. Mm -hmm. I grew up into the world of finance because I wanted to help people manage their finances. Mm -hmm. So in 2011, I did yes. my ACCA, completed it. I finished my MBA in 2012, mm -hmm. did ACI, which is a course in treasury management in about, I think, 2014, grew up. Um, and started SIE, which is a securities exam, mm -hmm. in 2020 mm -hmm. or 2019, I think. I also did a couple of Series 6, 6 Series 7, Series 66 in finance. At the end of the day, it's all about the passion that I have in finance that got me to this level. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, Fatma, for sharing that. And uh, congratulations to you too and all the success that you've earned. So that, I mean, just listening to them introduce themselves and all the um, accomplishments that they have, it really tells you that today we're going to have a really solid conversation when it comes to women in finance. So uh, we'll start with you, Betty Marong. Uh, why do you think we have so much gender gap in the area of finance? We know it's, it's, a, it's a sector that is led by men, uh, but why do you think we have such a huge gender gap within this area? 
Betty. Um, thank you, Mariama. I think yeah. a very big question for me to answer. But I think I can speak from my experience. And unfortunately, my experience is not from finance in Gambia, but from where I uh, did my education and my training, you know. And when I started in KPMG, they did, they generally recruit on a 50-50 basis. So they recruit on average uh, new students every, every, every year, uh, mm-hmm. every year. And it's almost balanced, sometimes even more, more, more women. And during this year's International Women's Day, they were doing uh, maybe a little bit of soul searching as to how is it that 100 people are hired and it's almost 50, 50 women and, and men who start off. But at the top, we, they just have 16% partners who are women and mm-hmm. trying to examine why that happened. I can only speak from my own experience mm-hmm. and how people that I started my career with uh, started to pursue the career ladder at some stage. So we all started off and the same, but around the time you jump from being a senior associate to a manager, a lot of people couldn't handle or didn't want to deal with the pressure of working as a woman in finance. So yeah. that's around the time when at least um, on average, uh, we start building our own families or having kids. And you kind of, some of them just realize you want to spend more time with you because they'll just take a lot of time from you. Mm. And you don't want to have that jungle. It requires. Uh, by the way, in the Gambia right now, internet connection is just horrible. So please <laughs> bear with us if we have some of these issues uh, coming, coming up. But uh, Fatou Diallo, as a chief executive officer of Takafun Insurance, uh, why is it important to have more women in finance or executive positions? Um, mama, uh, <laughs> I've, I've always said um, as, as a woman, we're natural leaders. And um, finance to me is a discipline. Um, as a finance person, you're expected to have the basis of financial discipline. So if you're a natural leader and then backed by the fact that you have a financial background, mm-hmm. it, it just um, translates into things getting better and things being done in the right way. Mm-hmm. So if you have more women in finance that means you will be able to deal with like women deal with children women deal with um, men women deal with society as a whole Mm -hmm. so i think really if you have more women in finance it will really help in getting everybody do things the right way because Mm -hmm. at least if you have a financial discipline as as expected as a woman it will really help you in um getting that to the to the next level and then to another level and then by the time you know it everybody has the financial discipline and so mm-hmm. if you have more women in finance really you are you are just um portraying the right direction getting people to get to do things right for yeah. example if you're a banker like somebody said um, you are really trying to help people to manage their finances mm-hmm. and to do what is right. You're not supposed to lend if you don't need to. So th- th- these are all things that women in finance are doing. And if mm-hmm. you have more of that, it means society as a whole will be heading towards the right direction. Yeah. If you ask. Well, that's interesting to know because most of the time women are labeled as high expense, you, you know, very expen- expensive people or they spend a lot. Like we, our expenditure is just too high. You know, we want to buy the most trendy hair. We want to buy the most trendy <laughs> clothes. So we are naturally labeled as people who spend a lot. So mounting such positions, does that, like, does our lifestyle really affect the financial management that we do or walk around? Maybe any of you can answer that if you want to. That, you know, I mean, that is, that is lifestyle. But if you mm-hmm. look at even the woman at home, the housewife at home has mm-hmm. to manage uh, um, the, the bit of finances that she that she has, yes. you know, be, be it business, be it at work, being at home, or whatever discipline that you find yourself. If mm-hmm. you don't have that basic financial discipline, it really don't, will, not, will not help you. Yes, some women are extravagant in spending, yeah. but really, uh, if you have the basic financial discipline, it really helps you to to manage. You know, mm-hmm. because finance is a resource that is never enough. 
Mm-hmm. So it is a it is a resource that has to be measured at any given time. Mm-hmm. So if you measure, you'll be able to to manage, and mm-hmm. then um, you probably will not get to, to talk. That's right. Thank you, yes. Fatu. Uh, Fat matter now. As an entrepreneur, how has your financial experience helped in the business that you run? Like for it to be successful and for you to be a good entrepreneur, has your financial background really helped in managing your own business? A lot. I um, know for a fact that being a financial professional requires you to be very articulate with numbers, very strategic on how you deliver it. Mm -hmm. So being a financial person allowed me to be, number one, very good in Excel. I'm able to play with numbers, make simulations, Mm -hmm. understand my risk prior, and be able to address it before it happens. Mm. I'm able to communicate easily, clearly, because being a financial person means you're too used to jargons. You're too used to all these numbers that people don't understand. And people are like, what is she talking about? Like me. So (laughs) over the time, it allowed me to simmer down my language, be clear and concise about how I communicate the numbers that I'm having. And because I have that advantage, I'm able to do that with my employees. I'm able to do that with my clients and my peers to show them that, okay, this is where we are in terms of numbers. This is what the numbers are saying. This is the literature that we need to look at. And this is where we're going to go to. Mm -hmm. Being a financial person, like Fatu mentioned, is all about discipline. It allowed me to be disciplined about spending my money. And when I am disciplined about spending my money, I have more money um, with me that allows me to then get to start a business, then get to build the estate that I have so far. Mm-hmm. There is a lot of advantages of having financial background, even with your kids. I have piggy banks for my kids. I pay them for the jobs that they do. Yeah. It allowed me to make strategic <laughs> decisions mm-hmm. every step of the way. Mm-hmm. Which is very important. I mean, I think most people underestimate the power of having a financial background before establishing their own businesses, which we will talk about later on, on why, you know, most businesses are not sustainable or they don't last for long and then it collapses. We don't hear about it anymore, you know. Uh, But Betty, are you okay now? Is your internet working now? Yeah, I'm not sure if Betty is still okay with the internet, but this is an open question to any of you uh, if you want to answer. Like, what are some of the challenges women face in pursuing a finance career? The first thing that affects most women is the primary role of being a mother. Most of us are mothers here, and I have three kids. Nice. Balancing work and life is really hard. Mm -hmm. In Gambia, Being in finance means working long hours. In Nigeria, it's pretty much the same thing, but it means it's more intense. Mm -hmm. It means that you've got to know your stuff. For you to know your stuff, you need to be well-learned. For you to be well-learned, you need to create time to study. I remember when I was young, back in Uganda, my mom used to lock herself inside the store. So we think she's gone so that she doesn't have to deal with us and she needs to study, right? (laughs) All of that affects a woman's ability to even go into finance. So they tend to look for areas that sort of accommodate their personal situation. And that's just a natural phenomena. The other, oppor- the other thing that affects um, women is the fact that women are so passionate, empathetic, and they love being everything to everyone. Mm -hmm. And when you're in a finance world where everybody needs you, a woman tries to do it all Mm -hmm. and that affects you. It helps you when you sacrifice time and the responsibilities in the office so that you can take care of every single person, it Mm -hmm. takes away from you. And what happens is over the years, you realize that women in finance who give it all and they're very good at finance tend to then get breakups with their relationships, tend to then affect their relationship with husbands in terms of cooking at the right time, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And over the years, people have attributed finance Mm -hmm. to being a bad woman. And because of that stigma, a lot of women shy away from it. Mm -hmm. I will allow my other panelists to add more and I'll jump in later. Mm -hmm. Thank you, uh, Madam Diva. Yes, 
Miss Jallo uh, or Madam Jallo? I think Fatima, what are some Fatima of the challenges? Is, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think uh, I'll just pick up from from where she she, she left off. Really, I think uh, there are lots of challenges. Uh, we've gone through a lot of challenges to get here. It's um, it's more to do with your responsibility. If you really compare a woman in finance and a man in finance, it, finance is a demanding role. Yeah. Especially when you talk of bankers, it's, it, it's really demanding. Plus your natural responsibilities of being a mother, being a wife, being a sister, being everything else, you know, being a society, uh, a person that society looks up to. So that really adds onto your responsibilities. Mm -hmm. Because, um, like, like uh, Fatmata said, I have two kids. And I remember um, during my days at Standard Chartered, I had both kids whilst, whilst I was with, uh, with Standard Chartered. And fortunately or unfortunately, they're just like a year apart. So you can imagine, you know, having to work. You are, well, during that time, we were, we, were, we were only allowed three months on maternity. By the time you come back to work mm -hmm. from maternity, you, you maybe the baby is only one month plus or just about two months. Mm. So those are the, those are some of the challenges, really, that that, that really uh, affects some women in finance. Mm -hmm. And um, the other thing is sometimes is the perception that people put onto it. It's like if you're a finance person, you are already seen to be somebody who's not. You probably don't want to get married, or because you yeah. want to marry, to, you you are married to the bank. I like mm -hmm. we they used to call us at some point, or. You, you know, so society really puts you at a corner. It's like you are this type of person. So most parents then would really shy away from their, even their kids um, 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 doing fire. Because mm -hmm. really, you're thinking, oh, if you're going to the bank, it means you will not have time for us. But I think today, really, uh, we are, we are we're moving from there. We're yeah. really moving. But then it was it was a bit of a challenge. But part of the challenges is it uh, that sometimes women are not trusted with funds uh, or with management of finance in particular institutes or organizations, just because of society's uh, insecurities about women and you know trusting them with huge amount of money to manage or to save. Is that part of any challenges that you, all of you have probably come across or not? No. There is no way no. anyone in their rightful mind mm -hmm. will tell you that I can't trust a woman with money. Mm -hmm. with money. Even the most insecure <laughs> husband gives his money to his wife because exactly. he knows yes. her capabilities. Mm -hmm. It's just the fact that sometimes women also do not have the confidence in themselves to say, I can manage million dollar portfolio. Mm -hmm. You see, if there's a job that is really hard, and there's a job vacancy. A man will say, you know what? I don't, it, it's, it's asking for a um, master's. I only have a degree. I'm going to try it anyway. If I uh -huh. fail, whatever. Yes. The woman will say, <laughs> well, I've not, I'm still doing my master's. I've not graduated. I don't have my certificate yet. Let me wait until I get my certificate. And the mm -hmm. one with master's will say, well, I don't have the years of experience. <laughs> exactly. they, they, women love being perfect. <laughs> yeah, and they just want that so perfect pretty. moment. And life isn't perfect. We need to understand that in our imperfection, we are mm -hmm. perfect. So that, like Fatu said, mm -hmm. the stigma, the perception, it, it affects us, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. sometimes it's not the society, it's the inner voice mm -hmm. inside of us that mm -hmm. tells us you're not good enough, all right? Yes. And the other issue that we have is that as mothers, again, I'm going to go back to the issue of a mother. Women love being mothers to their men. Mm -hmm. to their kids mm -hmm. and as mothers we sacrifice my child wants to go to school i want to go to school of course mm -hmm. i'll give it to my child first mm -hmm. on average a man will say well let me educate myself first when i make money i'll take it to school <laughs> the woman will say um let me sacrifice me so that my man can be the king so he you know provides mm -hmm. so that my kids can go through life mm -hmm. all of that um, is what we go through and we just need to learn how to balance the two, I guess. 
Mm-hmm. Well, that's very important, knowing how to balance the two. And I'm glad that that point has been made clear now that women can be secured with funds. So don't be scared. I mean, <laughs> if you're out there and you're still doubting, mm-hmm. we are okay with that. You can trust us with your money. But um, you as guests, the, the, the panelists that we have today, you can start sending your questions on the chat group. Uh, if you have any questions for your fellow partners today on this panel, I mean, you can just start sending them. But Betty, I think now you are okay. Is your internet working fine yes. now? Yes, okay, I've been great. Uh, Welcome back. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, so, I came in. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. I came, in, I came in when you were having the discussion about challenges, and I do agree uh, yeah. with uh, with the other panelists on the reasons. I just wanted to add one more thing, which links a little bit to what Fatima said uh, about uh, the inner voice, which is. I think the limitations sometimes, at least in my experience, and I have a different experience with my career than yeah. what is in Gambia. So those cultural things did not come for me as much as if I lived in Gambia, I would probably have those much more. Mm-hmm. But I think from people, from from what I understand and the people when I was explaining, people that drop off the career ladder, it's mostly you are putting limitations for yourself as a woman because you're seeing things as too hard or it will take too too much time. And I, or you have to do it the way the men do it. And instead of kind of customizing it yeah. to the feminine uh, way of doing things. Mm-hmm. And if you just think about the fact that in every home that you go to, in most homes, the manager of that house is a woman. Yeah. Even if the dad is bringing the money at home, the woman makes sure that those, uh, that, that money reaches the end of the month or it's invested. Ask any man who has a lot of things invested, who is the driving force behind that investment? It's mm-hmm. usually the woman. So if you carry forward that natural instinct that you have from just being raised by a mother or whatever it is, mm-hmm. and carry it to the home, use that same feminine uh, management skills. Don't be like the man. A man yeah. is a man and a woman is a woman. Mm-hmm. I think you can actually take, take up more challenges than uh, you allow yourself to, 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 to mm-hmm. do right now. Just because you think, oh, I'm going to have kids. I probably don't want to take up this role because it will take too much time from me. I'm pretty sure you can do it if you want to. And a That's lot of right. Women are- <laughs> That's right. Well, thank you so much, Betty. But um, we all know we're in a phase of pandem- of a pandemic which, uh, which has affected all of us financially in our businesses, in organizations that we work with, and even with our life, personal lives. Uh, so, Betty, how do you think we can sustain our finances during this pandemic? Um, I mean, personal or f- f- company, right? I mean, personally, I think uh, in the pandemic, especially with uh, countries who are restricted from traveling or even on, on lockdowns, mm-hmm. uh, there's much less spending. I mean, should be. You're not going out, you're not buying as much, you're not traveling as much. So mm-hmm. in my opinion, this is a golden opportunity for people to actually re-dive, I mean, divert funds to actually savings or investments mm-hmm. instead of you know buying online or whatever avenues that you have to spend your money. You are, if you're fortunate enough, unfortunately, there are a lot of people who have lost their jobs and their livelihoods in this pandemic, and it's very sad. Mm-hmm. But if you're fortunate enough to retain your job at the same salary, I think you are financially in a much better position uh, yeah. than you were during the time without COVID, where you are going out, spending money on a daily basis. And the activities always cost money, at least from, mm-hmm. from my experience. So I think I, I, that's what I would like, like to believe. But um, in, 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 in companies where you are getting a little bit uh, less business, less revenue right now, yeah. it is actually a golden time. Crises are a golden time to actually review your cost, uh, mm-hmm. your cost space and your spending. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's also the perfect moment to get the organization to buy into cutting costs because when good times, no one is interested in cutting costs. Yeah. So the finance person is the only one nagging everyone. We have to be aware of costs because, oh my God, why do we care? We are having revenue. We can yeah. fund this. Yes. But in, 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 good ta- in bad times, it's usually when you take those top decisions and you have a buy-in. So let's say you are overstaffed in your organization and you have, been, you have been nagging on them and telling them, the cost of payroll is, is, is more than we can sustain, and no one listened to you. Right now, you're telling them, really, we cannot. We are not even getting half the revenue we're getting uh, mm-hmm. anymore. So maybe yeah, it's time so. to reorganize and let some people go. That's not usually someone something that people like to hear, but in times of crisis, they want to get ideas of how to cut costs so mm-hmm. they can maintain, uh, they can survive with the revenue that they have. Mm-hmm. 
But those are very important points that you just gave there, Betty, which I think most of us will start putting into consideration because I think people are still not aware that they need to learn how to sustain their finances during this pandemic because nobody knows when this will end. Are the vaccines working? We don't know. Is there ever going to be medication for it? We don't know. Is the world, in fact, going to go back to normal? Is business going back to normal? We don't know yet. So we are all in the cloud there. And I think sustainability is very important and management during these times. Now, um, we understand that you've lived in different uh, countries with different cultural backgrounds in the UK, in the US, Nigeria, and of course, Gambia. Um, how did you manage to succeed in such different multiple um, cultural backgrounds and financial structures that are not also the same? It boils down to being open-minded. Yeah. I'm so fortunate that I am the daughter of my dad. <laughs> really? That he, is <laughs> he, he's worked in the UN and he's always been busy. So when I'm with him, obviously you would want his time. You'd want to play with him. What he does to me is he gives me strong books to read. And he tells me that once you finish reading that book, come and do a presentation of what the book is talking about and what lessons you've learned from it. Mm -hmm. So I've learned over the years to number one, understand being open-minded. Mm -hmm. My mindset changed based on the fact that I've read really strong and powerful books. And diversity is a mindset. When you get to meet different people and they give you different lessons, you become humbled by them. Yeah. The moment your cup is full, you cannot take in any tea. Mm -hmm. But when your cup is empty and then you get in there with an open mind mindset, you then get to learn a lot. So for me, being in Eritrea, Ethiopia, the countries you've mentioned, Malaysia, mm -hmm. it allowed me to learn people from different backgrounds and it allowed me to see how people approach things. So you see in Gambia, we are a bit more conservative and we... We're not aggressive. We don't really go out for our goals as much as our counterparts in other countries. Being in these different countries allowed me to be daring. It allowed me to, to understand that um, I am who I am based on what I ask for. Someone once told me an open mouth um, doesn't get fed. You have to open your mouth. The willingness to understand each culture, regardless of how I feel about the situation, mm -hmm. allows me to capture one thing after the other from every single person. Mm -hmm. And you get to learn if you're open enough for that. Mm -hmm. Well, that's very important. I mean, uh, the more you interact with different people, obviously, the more you see different aspects of how things are done. And it, it gives you the opportunity to be more open-minded as well. And I think that's a great advantage there. But Fatou uh, Jalo, how did you reach your level of success given that um, the sector you are in has a really huge gender gap. Um, <clears throat> sorry, my mama. <laughs> it's 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 not been easy, uh, really. But I I I believe it's uh, it's a mix of different um, aspects. Mm -hmm. Really, I I think as a woman, you should not really settle for anything. We should always try to ensure that you, you know, once you have that discipline, you portray it. And then it's about um, leading by example. Mm -hmm. uh, setting, setting that pace where people really learn from you. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> you have to be resilient as well, because sometimes you come across certain that really uh, pushes you down. So you, you really have to be um, um, resilient sometimes. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you have to lead by example. Your character has to be right as well. If mm -hmm. you have the right character, if you lead by example, um, you usually, as we all know, it, the, um, working under the, the, the private sector, anything mm -hmm. that you achieve is out of merit mm -hmm. because there, there are basically no favors. So whatever you do, you get a merit for it. And then um, that way you, you really push forward. Mm -hmm. um, you don't take no for an answer. You don't, you don't really understand what it means by impossible. Mm -hmm. You really go for, you know, whenever you, sometimes you have some challenges tasks at hand, but 
I I really used to look at this as um, stepping stones. Mm-hmm. It's like okay, there's this task. It's very difficult. You 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 can't really do it, but it keeps you in the office or it keeps you up for a long time because you want to get a solution. So mm-hmm. once we continue to do that, it really pushes you up because somebody out there looks at you and said, "Hey, he's a problem solver. He's a solution giver." It's yeah. not just somebody who would just take excuses. Like uh, my fellow panelist says, as a woman, you cannot just sit and there's this um, little voice in your head telling you, or oh, you've done your best and that's it. Your best is probably never enough. Not you need enough. to always aim higher and be able to you know, produce results. That way, anybody looking will say, mm-hmm. okay, at least you mean business. If you are given anything, you, you it's not always uh, uh, um, effort, but at least it is, the solution at the end of the, mm-hmm. the day that uh, that really matters. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, don't limit yourself. I think that's basically don't limit, yeah, yourself, don't limit so yourself. You know, go to the highest point of whatever you think you can that's achieve, right. and don't just leave it there as oh maybe I'm not too good because of my sexes. That uh, maybe this is not that's meant right. for me. This position is too big of a title that probably that's I will not right. be able to handle. So I, I, I love that advice. But similarly, also with Betty, I mean, you have also um, been in a country like Norway where the structures are well put together from what we understand. I mean, as Africans, of course, Europe is always seen as a country or a continent <laughs> where, I mean, everything is structured really well compared to a developing country like the Gambia. So how were you able to transit from that type of um, background, like coming from Norway to Gambia, and most of these institutions where financial structures are lacking? Um, I I don't want to be unfair to the (laughs) entire finance uh, fraternity in Gambia, because I came from private sector to public sector in Gambia. Mm-hmm. So, and I understand there's huge difference between, as my sister mentioned, mm-hmm. between private sector yeah. and public sector. <laughs> so you can imagine, I probably would have had a smoother transition if I went from private sector in Norway to private sector in Gambia, and then the other way. But of course, it's a, if you can just imagine this uh, comparison, it's a huge shock for me. So I feel like I've gone back 10 years. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> when I started my career in audit, where things were very manual and we had to carry around these folders. Mm. Uh, that was in 2019 when we dropped, 2009, sorry, when we dropped those and went all digital. And when I moved to my new role, I was privileged enough to have a, a, a manager, supervisor who was mm. thinking the same way as me, a paperless uh, office where we try to um, utilize the tools that are available uh, IT-wide to yeah. ensure that we automate as much as possible and do spend most of our time anal- analyzing and giving quality uh, uh, information and advice to the board of directors and management mm-hmm. instead of spending our time reconciling and doing all these manual tasks that I find now in, <laughs> in, in, in my role in Gambia and people who are working on. So that yeah. has been a shock. And I, I, I get shocked every day. <laughs> of course, I can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> I get I shocked imagine. every single day uh, since I got here in, in December because yeah. I think and one of my one of my colleagues or my people working in my department actually looked at me on Friday and said you know what the problem is I said no he's like it's because you didn't think it would it, should, it could be this bad because what? Like, I, I didn't think it could be this bad so oh, that's yeah. why you I didn't, didn't expect it yeah years. I did not expect it to be <laughs> I mean it is literally 10 years uh, behind for me because mm-hmm. I moved on a lot so it's it, it, it's been a shock but i mean i think technology wise that development happens much much faster so 10 years uh behind might be fixed in a year it is possible to fix in a year because technological development has come that way and i think people are easy to carry carry with you into those challenges if you can convince them and you can show them that look i have experience using tools and technologies and it works very well and makes my day very easy and it makes my work even more um, enjoyable and more valuable because mm-hmm. I don't have to sit and do these manual yes. tasks that computer can do. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you for sharing that with us. I mean, uh, but it's always interesting to come back home and work and help also put the structures together. I think this is why it's always important. We are always excited to receive back Gambians 
after being away for so long, either on studies or work, to come back home and share their experience and their expertise with, you know, the rest of the people. So we can also learn to develop and grow to that level where things would at least be on a, you know, scale that is expected. So this is a general question to any of you who wants to answer it. Um, now that there's so much advocacy going on around the world on women uh, being independent, independently financially guided or, you know, being financially independent. I mean, it's, it's a key discussion, especially in Gambia. You know, we'll take the rural Gambia, for instance, where still women are struggling to be independent, uh, to be independent with their finances. It's either they work hard and at the end of the day, they bring it back home and their husbands take it away from them. Or probably they don't even know how to manage their own finances and they give it back to their husbands. And guess we all know the rest of the story. They're going to say we are gender biased, but of course, you use the money for your own personal use. You go marry a second wife. So financial independence is, is very important in this generation that we are in. But when you all hear financial independence, what does that mean? Uh, Madama, sorry, if I may come in. Um... Yes. Financial independence really follows uh, financial discipline. Mm -hmm. And like, like I started uh, with, um, if you are financially disciplined mm -hmm. in trying to push this women agenda through, it really helps us because unless you are financially um, strong, mm -hmm. it will be difficult to be independent. Mm -hmm. Because if you continue to sit at home and wait for somebody to come and give you something before you can move, Mm -hmm. or because before you can cook or before you can eat, obviously you will, you, it will be difficult for you to be or to call yourself independent. Yeah. So financial independence really uh, follows the financial discipline. You have a financial discipline, then you have financial independence, then you can call yourself independent or at least be able to mm -hmm. uh, move certain things or do certain things on, on, on your own. So mm -hmm. as women really, I think um, it's, it's, it's very important that we have this financial discipline because. Yes. Um, if, 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 you took, if you talk of these women in, in the rural areas, there were times when I worked on the SME where we needed to support women. Mm -hmm. you, you realize that some women have skills, but really because they don't have the financial discipline, yeah. the skills will be back to zero because mm -hmm. you will work twice as hard, but because you cannot manage the finances, the little finances that you are getting it will be difficult to move to another level. Mm -hmm. You will see some business, whether women or men, they have the same pocket for the business and for their individual needs. So mm -hmm. you cannot even differentiate yourself from the business. So really, that also will not will, will not help. So really, I I I will just allow my um, other uh, um, mm -hmm. panelists to 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 keep it. But really, financial discipline is is the way. To, is, is, financial is the way discipline, to definitely. Thank you so much. That's very important. Uh, Diva, you want to add to that? They've said almost everything that needs yes. to be said. For me, financial independence is a state of mind and understanding that you have to make it work in every situation. Mm -hmm. It involves budgeting, mm -hmm. like Fatou said, being disciplined and following through a line of action. Mm -hmm. I'll give you an example. A lot of women that you mentioned in the rural areas are actually financially independent. Mm -hmm. Most of them are the breadwinners in the house. They think they're not, but they really are. The only problem is they're not disciplined with money. They're not intentional mm -hmm. about the money. Mm -hmm. When I was married, I was in Piran. I lived in Piran with my mother-in-law. Yeah. And the ladies, every time we have ceremonies, and in Gambia, we used to have a lot of ceremonies. I think in every single day <laughs> in the Gambian society, there is a ceremony. If you yeah. cough, we celebrate it. If you give birth, we celebrate it. Um, if you lose your virginity, for example, we're celebrating. Like we, we celebrate every little thing in Gambia. Mm -hmm. And for every single ceremony, the ideal perception is that you have to wear a new outfit. Oftentimes, mm -hmm. the women have to go buy a new material, sew a new material. Yeah. I watch a particular lady who thinks she's, she's, she cannot make it in life. And I told her, listen, if I have half the money you have, yeah. I would have bought a land, I would have built a house. I would have done everything. Because look, the material cost about, I'll say this in dollar six figures. I think it's about $3,000. Like that's the cheapest you can get. The sewing is about another $1,500 or $2,000 if you really want a good sewing. Mm -hmm. And then you have to provide some money to 
the person who is celebrates who was celebrating right is supposed to give a contribution mm -hmm. if you look at how much you've spent you probably might have spent about 150 mm -hmm. per ceremony for every single one of those ceremonies if i count in a month you've probably spent about a thousand dollars without yes. knowing it right mm -hmm. you borrowed money from mm -hmm. someone you got money from your agricultural proceeds you did this you did that a thousand dollars is a lot of money i could do so much with that money Right, okay. we are all financially independent. We're just not financially disciplined, like Patsy said. Mm -hmm. We just need to learn how to budget, be intentional about how we spend money. There was a lady that called me when I was in the U.S. and said, "I want money because there is um something coming up, and and my kids need new clothes." I'm like, "Well, the clothes you have are they torn? No. Are they looking bad? No. But you just bought clothes, so why can't you wear them? No. You know, people will say this is this and that. It I'm like, clothes. my kids are literally struggling with the same clothes I bought them two years ago. Some of them are too tight, and I'm like, well, that's a new style. Mm -hmm. Why? Because I'm not, I don't even have the money to buy new clothes because I'm too busy trying to buy a new house. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? So mm -hmm. financial independence again is a state of mind, mm -hmm. right? It's um. Taking risk is also sometimes financial independence. Taking the initiative to do the right thing mm -hmm. at the right time mm -hmm. is very key. Mm -hmm. That's very important. I'm glad you mentioned the issue of clothing because now is a trend in Gambia. The moment you, you took a photo of one outfit and you put it on social media, you don't want to wear that 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 dress or outfit again because people will say, Hi, you're in a salon, you can do it on Facebook Gambia or on Instagram. I think, you know, your clothes are yours. You bought, you bought them. You can wear them as many times as you can. But then, Betty, I mean, how has your audit experience helped in taking up financial roles? Oh, I think I'm shaped <laughs> by my by, by my training in audit in so many ways. Mm -hmm. um, the fact that part of our training very much is the the, the use of professional judgment. Mm -hmm. So it, it, when you walk into an into an organization and you have to actually audit and assess, and most of the work we do is actually not related to just reviewing documents, but it's talking to people because you are assessing. How is the integrity of management? How is management susceptibility to override controls and all of this? So the, 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 the use of professional judgment, I think that training that I had from my audit, I've been able to use very much in my role as a financial controller where you're doing basically the same thing, but just you're within the organization, especially now coming into Gambia, where yeah. I've never practiced and trying to uh, use that experience to kind of gauge who is telling me the truth and who's not and who's yeah. telling me half the truth because you have to do those things. You have this cultural muscle hard that I kind of is not helpful in a professional setting. Yes. Because mm -hmm. I'm, I ask, I'm asking you a question, just give me an answer. I'm not going to go and say, Ki mama but mm -hmm. that happens, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I also think that in audit, uh, when you go into a, a company to audit them and you are writing a paper about your audit uh, work, you have to make a conclusion. You can't leave it open. It's not like, I don't know, I can't say any other profession, but you need to have a conclusion to have your partner or your reviewer review your judgment. So decision-making is something that you are trained, you are drilled in. You have to make decisions. But I have met countless people who are scared of making decisions. Mm -hmm. And it's even worse in the Gambia. Mm -hmm. People just shy away from making decisions. They'll throw it around until or, or share it. Mm -hmm. So let's all be part of it. So when it fails, <laughs> uh, we can all share the blame yeah, because it's yeah. that twisted blame culture, which is very actually detrimental to growth in any organization. Mm -hmm. Anyone who's afraid yeah. to fail is afraid to try and succeed. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's that's one of these these uh, these problems that I I see as problems because I just don't understand. But I know now that uh, it's because of my training and my background. I've also em em embraced them. So I have been trained with people who don't necessarily, they're useless in making decisions because they just don't want to. Some mm -hmm. people just want to, don't want to be the one who has their, their name written on a decision. They don't want to but take the responsibilities. I, they don't want to take the yeah. responsibilities because there are risks. As if you are in an unhealthy environment, there are risks because the ultimate, the first reaction to a bad leader for you making mistakes is to blame you and, you know, chastise you instead of trying to under, trying to learn from that experience. Yes. So I do understand the fair, but I think those things uh, have prepared me a lot for the roles that I have taken up subsequently. Uh, but also uh, 
for an auditor, an external auditor, integrity is everything. So mm -hmm. as an audit firm, that's one of the things that they guide. You will see the big four, the big four audit firms would guide their integrity and their independence like uh, very much because if they lose that, they lose business. Exactly. You, you need an auditor who has integrity because if you come into an organization to, to audit them, and you have conflict of interest or for some reason cannot see things that are right in front of you or don't even want to ask the right questions or know what's going on but you don't want to investigate that's a problem because then you are not reporting back to the board or to the society in general mm -hmm. as to what is the true uh, issues in this company exactly that's your role you are that's supposed to uncover yeah. those mm -hmm. so integrity professional judgment Mm -hmm. And definitely decision making. You need to be able to make this decision. very important case that you just highlighted there. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. Now, uh, Fan Mutajalo, I saw that you worked as sales officer, customer advisor, check processor mm -hmm. before getting to uh, the position of chief executive. Um, how were you able to walk yourself through that ladder to where you are now? Because we see especially our generation, we want the fast track su uh, success. Like we, we want to quickly mount big positions and not want to do the grassroots job that would also help in our experiences. So how were you able to put yourself in check uh, throughout all these ladders that you climbed onto where you are today with discipline? <laughs> um. Mama, it's not been easy. Yes, uh, like you rightly said, I think I've done it all <laughs> when it comes to finance and um, customers and customer service. But like I said in the beginning, it's about trying to do the right thing first um, or making sure that whatever you do is right. Because from from being a check processing officer to being a CEO is quite the kind of heat gap and um, quite a number of years. Mm -hmm. And be persistent. In, in, in not just doing it, doing the right thing because somebody's looking, but yeah. doing the right thing persistently, uh, whether there's somebody looking or not. I I, I, I think these are um, some of my. Uh, I I don't I don't really <laughs> I, I, as they say I don't really lose it mm -hmm. very 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 easily. I don't I don't really lose it very easily. And I think it it helps. I I. I've been prof like, professionalism is my is my mantra. I yeah. I'm a very professional person, and that I don't dilute at, at any point because of maybe somebody is watching or because somebody is saying. I I try to be as professional as as I can in whatever discipline I'm, I'm mm -hmm. or whatever area you you, you find me, mm -hmm. whether it's within the Gambia or outside the Gambia. Yeah, uh, we try to do it right and uh, making sure that really whatever you achieve. Is out of merit. You don't get favors here and there. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes there is the wrong perception. Uh, for example, they say, "Oh, well, then you get more So it's wow. not. It's not um, if I can say, it's, it's not very even respectful sometimes. And mm -hmm. uh, yes, you, 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 you. Some so some people think they can just bribe you their way through you because mm -hmm. you're a woman. Mm -hmm. So some people would try. Yes, they will try. To see, okay, maybe if I give her a gift, I can just get my way through. Exactly. And those, as the, you know, so, so as a woman, you have to get that um, um, shield mm -hmm. to be able to shield yourself against any 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 odds. Mm -hmm. You know, people coming in just to 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 bribe their way through, or people coming in mm -hmm. to see how easy you are or how not easy you are. So professionalism really is mm -hmm. is, is is key, especially when you deal with customers. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't really buy into any favors really for me it has to be professional throughout it yeah. has to be the right way and it has to be professional mm -hmm. that's very important thank you so much for setting light on that where it looks like we we almost covered the one hour but the, in, the conversation <laughs> is so interesting and i haven't even exhausted all the questions but before we leave fatmata as a successful entrepreneur it will be very very important for you to at least give out some tips or advice to young entrepreneurs or startups on how they can sustain their businesses. Now, Gambia is one of those countries where you see people start a great business today and in the next five years, the business collapse or we don't even hear about the business. Either they have financial issues, management issues, or the business just fades away. 
why is it that we have that issue of sustainability with business, especially with startups? When it comes to startups, and I will be having a couple of video series about helping entrepreneurs, helping startups and small businesses. I will be having a partnership with iGrow Business and Finance and mm-hmm. Business in Gambia. So if you do go into my page, I will put it in the chat uh, and follow me. You would see a couple of YouTube videos around how to sustain your business. If you do have topics around that that you want me to touch on, I'm more than happy to do so. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to business, everybody have ideas. They get excited, but they're not intentional about sustainability. Everybody has great ideas, goals. They have all these beautiful plans, but it's just to get started. The question now is when, when things get tough, how are you going to battle it? What, what is your support system? Mm-hmm. They don't have that. You have to have a plan, right? A goal without a plan is a wish. A plan without... An action is just a dream and an action with, with that consistent and persistency mm-hmm. is a mere waste of resources. So you have to be intentional about um, and be specific about what you want, where, why you want it, how you want it, where you want it, when you want it, That's right. what you intend to do about it. Mm-hmm. When you know your why, you're going to keep moving forward no matter what the failure is or trials and tribulations. Mm-hmm. So for young entrepreneurs out there for, or any person for that matter number one preparation is more powerful than perfection don't wait for the perfect moment the more planning you do the more successful you will be both in your workplace and at home Mm -hmm. be open to new opportunities do not limit yourself based on the plans you've made sometimes opportunities come in when you're open-minded you get to see that oh Maybe I could use this for this, or maybe I could use that to that. I just advertise myself right now in this forum. I was yeah. open-minded about it, right? And I'm sure the, the, the organizers will come and jump on me, but I've already done it, isn't it? <laughs> your network is your net worth. Choose your friends wisely. Choose who you spend your time with. Be selfish about it. Be polite to everyone, but guard your inner circle fiercely. Because you're only as big as the biggest person in your sphere of influence. I am very intentional on who I allow in my space. Mm -hmm. Admit your mistakes. When you do a mistake, just accept it. That's right. And one of the things I remember is I was talking to, a lot of people come to me for mentorship and I was talking to someone and he said, I don't want anybody to help me because I don't want them to say that um, they're the reason why I I, I, I I grew up or the other reasons why I achieved or be myself. And I asked them, but why not? Why not? For you to go up, someone has to hold your hands. Accept that. For you to be able to get to the highest level, even Bill Gates didn't get there by himself. People held him and took him through. Accept it. You're not an island. You, you need help. You need someone to hold you mm-hmm. to take you to the next. You need help. You need collaboration. We all it's, need help. Yeah, um, Fatu Jalo is good at one thing and I know I'm not that good at in it I will mm-hmm. admit my flaws and ask Pat mm-hmm. to please help me yeah if sure. if Rima is good at something that is really powerful I'm not going to be jealous well I'm going to be jealous anyway but <laughs> I'm also going to walk out to him and say hey help how can I use your strength to address my weakness mm-hmm. how can I use my strength to help you because mm-hmm. to be able to get you have to give also be transparent, be honest. Like Fatu said, integrity is the most important thing. Transparency mm-hmm. and honesty is the key to managing relationships and gaining trust from people. You just have to be honest to yourself first, then to people. Yes. Not in your network. Do not mm-hmm. underestimate anybody. Try and network with people. Get to know people. Because it's only when you get to know people that you mm-hmm. get to get. Right? Mm-hmm. I have friends that I've never met in mm. person but mm. they've helped me so much grow my business they've helped me connect to one CEO in Sierra Leone or one manager in this other country that person has helped me with some materials I've needed I've never met them but mm. I've broadened myself so number one create your LinkedIn be very intentional about what you want be very specific and run your own race Fatu is going to grow a business she's going to get customers she's going to get 100,000 followers 
She's not you. There are more hundred thousand followers that you can get. Do not run Fatu's race. Mm -hmm. Do yours. It's okay yes. to mm -hmm. overtake, overspeed, but just stay in your lane. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, uh, Farmata Diba. Thank you so much, ladies, Betty Marong, Fatma Tajalo. It was interesting having such an important conversation with all of you as we are still celebrating International Women's Month. And today we're talking about women in finance, which is also key in our success and key in our professions as uh, women in finance. I think it's also important for them to be recognized and be celebrated and also for them to uh, share their experiences in the field that they are in now before we leave i know we have the question and answer session so uh does any of you have any questions i'm not well i was supposed to read them but because um we are running out of time so if any of you have any question that you want to ask the other please go ahead and ask and then later i'll open it to the viewers who have joined us uh to be part of this program as well so um does any of you have any questions for each other Um, I have a question for Fatu uh, yeah. Antijalo. So, um, at least in, in the beginning of my career and uh, for most of it, I have seen women uh, who have made it all the way to the top. Uh, and I have had the tendency, of course, to identify more with them and look to them as role models. Mm -hmm. um, in my experience, at least, very few of them have been inter interested in in, in because they, they, they want to be some of them want to dissociate themselves from that feminine agenda yeah uh, so they wouldn't want to necessarily be the ones who's um who's championing the cause of making sure they they, they mentor those because it will be seen seen as favoritism or whatever it is mm -hmm. and i have in my experience not all but seeing some of them as trying too much to be men mm -hmm. in their roles and instead of just being their authentic self yeah. How do you see that, uh, that that dynamic in the Gambia? Is it different? Are women generally just uh, themselves in, when they make it to the top? I'm asking because you've made it to the top. <laughs> yes. <laughs> or have I'm you? Dollar, yeah. <laughs> what is your experience? Because you have you have worked your career. Um, I th I think being your authentic self really helps. You don't really need to force to be a to be a, a man or to be. Mm -hmm. I think. Um, we can't really uh, end this discussion without um, um, realizing that yes, we meet we need men as well in 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 helping us. I've I've had men bosses and women bosses who have really uh, I have really looked up to because of one thing or the other. Uh, mostly, whenever I used to see women at the top, I used to think, "Oh, how?" Because mm -hmm. then it was it was not as you know, as we see it today. So I used to really want to know how and why. And really, I have more or less um, tension, intentionally attached myself to them to, to, to really understand. Uh, I mean, some of these challenges that we are actually talking about, it has happened before. I remember I, I had a, a, a lady CEO at Ecobank uh, who was a young, you know, very professional, very dynamic, very, very good. So she actually inspired me a lot. She actually really, really inspired me a lot. And I, I used to look up to her and I used to talk to her a lot. And I used to also try to find out what her challenges were, which is what we are really talking about here today. Mm -hmm. You know, the, 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 our natural responsibilities, the, the, the having the baby stuff uh, mm -hmm. and all that. But really, um, um, it has really put in me that I cannot get to the top without carrying one or two other people. So based on that, we have we have formed uh, uh, I don't know, a cluster of people who really coach and mentor um, girls. Uh, I am I am I attended St. Jesus High School. So based on that, we have this at St. Jesus High School. So we mentor girls from that age. And then you really uh, uh, coach them to see them come up, get them to believe in themselves, get them to really push harder, get them to understand what they can be in the future. At least try to inspire them in a way. So these are those are some of the things that we we try to do to at least uh, um, create a link and and um, 
ensure that these girls see light at the end of the tunnel. These girls can also work towards achieving something in life at the end of the day. So that is happening. That, that, that is happening. But I think we can do more. Um, um, we, we should not leave this platform without probably um, I'm, I'm sharing. I know Betty, Betty is my sister, but yeah. probably uh, Fatmata. I've heard about mm -hmm. Fatmata, but we did not meet. As, as, as mm -hmm. as well. So I think it's important to create these contacts so we get to know each other, so mm -hmm. we get to share certain discipline. Like uh, Fatmata rightly said, I might be very good at one thing and she might be getting very good at another. So we need to share. Mm -hmm. uh, that way we mm -hmm. grow together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That way Thank we grow together. And now it's, it's, so it, it yeah. is easy and because we can do these things online. Mm -hmm. An hour online, mm -hmm. we learn a lot. Mm -hmm. And then we can we can share a lot as well. That's right. Well, I thank you so important. much. We will conclude by asking each of you to probably give brief advice to young women and girls who are looking forward to pursuing a career in the area of finance. What advice would you give them? But matter, yes, you I wanna... can start. Um, yeah. Um, yes. Um, really, my advice to girls or anybody is to is three is, is few things. Don't spend what you don't have. Mm -hmm. We cannot spend what you don't have. You cannot always um, always try and put aside something for the future. It helps. Yeah. Depending on what at, on, at what level you are, always try to invest in one thing or the other. Try to save something for for a rainy day, mm -hmm. like we always say. It's mm -hmm. not always necessary to borrow. Borrow when it's necessary. If it's not necessary, we do, you really don't need to borrow. Mm -hmm. And one thing I also want to just um, leave you with is the fact that in, in Gambia, there's one thing that's really um, affecting women mm -hmm. is this uh, the, the maternity leave for six months. That is one thing that really, I know so we are, we are running out of time, but I just mm -hmm. go back to to dilate on this a little, mm -hmm. it was supposed to help women mm -hmm. in, you know, pushing, um, um, nursing their babies and doing whatnot for six months. But here I can tell you today that most most institutions, most hirers are mm -hmm. shying away from hiring women. And that is not helping. Yeah. That is really not helping us. Mm -hmm. So I think it's one thing that we really need to, need, need to look mm -hmm. at to, to continue pushing this women agenda. Thank, Thank you, you so much, much Fatmata. Thank you for your time. Um, how about you, Maro? Uh, Betty, what advice would you give to young girls? Oh, I would definitely uh, advise more young girls to actually uh, pursue the, 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 the finance course and, uh, and study finance. Um, I want to believe that that's also part of the reason why we don't have so many women in finance, that women shy away from starting that uh, career path to start with. And always when you start, do not start with the goal of stopping somewhere mid, but always have the ambition to go all the way. Uh, people like me and as my sister mentioned, I would love to help mentor anyone who wants to see or learn from my experience and how I uh, how I made it through school uh, and to my career. Uh, and I think we there's a lot of benefits. I'm pretty sure while I was having internet connection issues, we discussed that there are a lot of benefits to having uh, a gender balance in this in, in this role in all institutions, but also in the finance role to make sure that we have both perspectives. There's, there's a perspective that we can bring into, into, into management uh, roundtables, into boardrooms that our, our, our male counterparts don't have. So that balance we can only have. So let's say in Gambia today, we, there was a legislation that ensured that, that required that you had 40% participation of women in all boards. You'll have a problem with that right now because a lot of women, especially if you need a finance background, are not pursuing that career. But that is, I mean, it's happening in other countries and whatever, if you want to look at where we are going, just look at what's happening in other countries that are more developed than us. So maybe it is, it is time to start investing in those careers. And it is my opinion that you're always guaranteed a job if you study finance. So I don't understand why people are shying away from you. You will always have a job. Like me, my boss and I talk about the fact that uh, if, we, if the company was going bankrupt, we will be the last people to hold the key and close the door. Everyone will be sent out the door. Because you need to make sure that you get a report of what the financial situation, as bad as it is, yeah. uh, before you close the door. So that mm -hmm. is a, a straight, guaranteed career path for you right there. Mm -hmm. Contact me and I'll tell you more. <laughs> Contact her and she'll tell you more. Thank you so much, Betty Maron. Uh, how about you, Farmer Tadibara? 
my advice to young girls out there is be yourself, be authentic, but be daring. Men are always daring. They go after their goals. Yeah. We are always shying and, and short-chaining ourselves. Mm-hmm. Be daring. And cut through this stigma. We are, Gambia is very cultural. and love the fact that we still preserve our culture. But one of the things about the culture is that it's this stigma. Mm-hmm. A girl is not supposed to do this. A girl is not supposed to be here. That sort of thing. Cut through it in the most respectful way possible. I remember when, I was, when we had the opportunity to go to Nigeria, the general perception was Fatmata just gave birth. She's actually on maternity leave right now. She doesn't, I don't think she'll have the time. She has twins. <laughs> I was like, did I tell you I won't have the time? Am I not going to work in Gambia? So how is an international job or going to another country going to affect that? Because I'll still be at home, go to work. My kids are not going to come to work with me. So what difference does it make? And when you put that across, they're like, okay, that's fine. Well, if you say so. So sometimes you have to speak out. You have to tell them, hey, don't worry. I can do this. Mm -hmm. But you have to believe in that first before you can even say it to begin with. Mm -hmm. Be daring. Be yourself. Mm -hmm. Don't feel that you have to be masculine to be heard mm. you can be feminine you can look good you could smell good you could cry if you, yeah. if you feel pressured it's mm. okay just mm. be yourself be yourself and be daring i love that thank you so much Fatmata Diva. now we have two questions from anita and suaibu um we'll just we, we just want this to be very interactive so suaibu if you want you can just ask them uh the question that you wanted to ask just unmute yourself and go ahead and ask welcome to the forum by the way Hello, everyone. Hi, Swab. How are you? Hi, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Uh, actually, uh, my question is being answered. But uh, if I, if I, if you may allow me, just to repeat for the ones that did not uh, heard it clearly. What I was just asking up. Uh, I have seventy percent uh, female representation in my office. Uh, sometimes I am asking myself, you know, the. The, the that that the high number of women in office really affects uh, productivity, and 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 I also put this question that uh, sometimes it gives this chance for them to form these smaller groups, and you know uh, what we call in our local language kabudu. You know they will form kabudu. these smaller groups, and you know if you are not part of that group, you are always sidelined, stuff like that. So mm-hmm. some of those things I think, for me from my experience working with them. Uh, affects their productivity so i think you might give some advice on that mm. i think i saw that right yeah, yeah. Was, <laughs> when i saw that i laughed and i said well i, I don't know what kabudu means but i'm guessing it's a voo but that's, that's yeah not, kind of voo, yeah i think it's, it's a, a slick or a slime sort of yeah click. yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, a, like a cult yes, it's right? a click, a click of yeah. people but that's something even men do that it doesn't it's not only <laughs> that's what on women. in fact yeah. men need more than women we just see sorry that it's not it's right. not discriminatory though <laughs> that's okay i understand and i think i responded to you the yeah. thing is when you have individuals men women that are forming a kabudu it only means that they have free time which also means that you did not give them enough work to get done. Mm. If they're too busy trying to accomplish a goal, they wouldn't do it. Yeah. I would form a kabut if I had free time. Guess what? It's really nice to do it. <laughs> but if I have work to be done, I will get work done. Mm. So what I told you was, number one, you have to be clear about your goals, your objectives, and the process. The things they need to do on Monday, in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening has to be clear so that they get to do their job. You need to provide training and help them grow their understanding of what expected productivity means to you. And I'm reading what I wrote, actually. Number mm-hmm. three, have a clear number they need to reach to and always monitor their performance. So have a good performance appraisal. My team, for, with my staff, we, we, we meet every week and we have a table. I see what, I will look at their productivity last week and we look at what they've done this week. We look at the variance and we talk about why there's a, there's a variance. When they know that these numbers are being calculated, they will make sure the next week that we're coming, there's no slack. We're going up. Now, if you're going up every day and the productivity is 100% and they're still doing kabudu, let them be. Let them do the kabudu as long as they're doing the job right. <laughs> Motivate them. Increase the salary. Tell them if you get to this goal, you're going to get a salary increase. If you get to this, your benefit, you get to have seven months of maternity instead of six months. All right? I, I, would, I would die for that. 
if I would kill for one year of maternity, <laughs> I would do anything for you, Swaibo. <laughs> and then also understand their strengths. When you know who your staff are, some of them are good at talking. Some of them are good at numbers. Some of them are good at something. Put them in the right places. If you put me in the wrong place, I'm the most unproductive person. Yeah. But if you take me to a place where I'm strong, your business is going to go to the next level. I can make you the next president of Gambia for crying out loud. <laughs> but lastly, is that you need to get leadership skills yourself. For your team to be forming a kabudu, it means there's something that needs to be addressed on your management as, as a person. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. You muted yourself. Yeah, you muted your, uh, your mic. Your mic is muted. Not matter, you muted yourself. Yep. I'm sorry, I got muted. So yeah. I'm just saying, <laughs> number one, lastly, but on the list is that get management and leadership training for yourself because it's very crucial for you to, for, it allows you to understand how to use the human resources to the best of its abilities. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Fatma Tadiba. And then we'll get to Anita. Anita, do you still have your question that you wanted to ask? My question was partly answered. Okay. By, um, the lady, the CEO lady, um, is it Fatu? Um, mm -hmm. So I wanted to, Betty asked the question. I don't know whether Betty kind of stole my question. <laughs> <laughs> I did, sorry, Anita. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you could just elaborate, like in your company, what uh, programs do you have there to support the young women that they can take of? Um, some of the um, maybe you guys sponsorship that you sponsor them to do courses um, so that they can you know have the confidence in, in coming up are you leading any sort of initiative in your organization where you you know mentor these young people women girls particularly in your company so they mm -hmm. can aspire to be where you are something like that thank you that, Anita. that's that's for me was it I think the Fatu, the CEO lady at insurance company. Fat <laughs> Okay, Anita. Um, yes, Anita. Um, it's it's uh, for me as the CEO. I always um, I always lead by saying that everybody should hold everybody's hand or somebody's hand and move along with it. Because for me, I believe that I am writing my own story. I'm writing my own book. And in that book, we need to see who and who and who you have been able to move up with. So it's it's more or less uh, a slogan that we talk about on a daily basis. And we have uh, a deliberate uh, um, strategy in ensuring that if you are a manager, middle-level middle, middle level manager, you need to be able to lift up somebody. So yes, um, um, we do that. We, we, we do that at, at, our, at our organization. And I also do that in my private life in trying to um, assist women and girls to, to get to the top. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, Fatma Tejala. That will bring us finally to the end of this interesting conversation and session that we had. Uh, I would like to thank each and one of you here today who participated despite your busy schedules. You are able to make time to come here, share your experience, and also interact with other people who are interested in what you are doing. I celebrate you all, like I was saying, this is a very important month for women. So I celebrate each and every one of you. Thank you to all of you who also joined the conversation, Swaibu, Anita, and all of you uh, who are also watching us. Thank you so much for your participation. Um, thank you to IG Finance, if I'm right, for you know bringing up uh, such great initiative, you know, to expand the conversation and also involve women who are also in finance and have their own businesses and leading organizations as well. This is quite a very interesting topic today. I learned a lot. You know, like I said, I I, I am really ignorant about finance. Mm -hmm deliberately because I, I think it's all about the numbers <laughs> since I don't like maths obviously when you talk about finance all the first thing that comes to your mind is the numbers mm -hmm. but I now realize it's beyond that it's more than that so um, people can actually continue to follow you all on social media I see most of you have your LinkedIn accounts um, I don't know if some of you are also on Instagram especially Fatmata as um, an entrepreneur 
yeah and then um yes maybe you can share your links on the chat before we just leave if people want to follow you on social media and to keep up this conversation or maybe if they have extra more questions that they want to follow up with you all but thank you so much for your time and i wish you all great success with everything you are doing thank you so much um to ig business and finance as well for this wonderful platform have a great weekend and bye bye <laughs> thank you so much to you too mariama yeah thank, thank you mariama. very much mariama thank you <laughs> thank you <laughs> Yeah, thank you very, 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 very much, Mariama. I was a bit doomed at some point listening to this great woman. Yeah. Um, I think if we had known, this should have been a two programs at the beginning of the month to celebrate and close it with yes. these phenomenal ladies, definitely. <laughs> I, I think today you, you'll probably change your mentality that finance is all about numbers. Of course. Um, it, wasn't, it wasn't only numbers, but these people have dealt in from corporations to the house, how you manage it, and even how we manage the society. You know, this this tells you that definitely Gambia has great women, and we celebrate you all. So Thank before you. we end the program, I'll hand over to Mr. Musa Swa to do the closing remarks for us before before we close. Thank you very much. Thank you. Over to you, Mr. Swa. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I hope you can hear me. Yes, we can hear you loud and clear, Mr. Swa. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mariama. Um, this was excellent. I, didn't, I don't think I have um, any, anything to add. Um, Mariama has been excellent from, from, from get-go. I um, tried. <laughs> I think some of, some of us know you from way back, and yes. um, you know how really determined you were. And it was no surprise you were able to really um, lead, lead these discussions to make sure um, everyone learn. And I think this is important um, to, to the panelists. I think Fatma Tadiva, we've been with her for, for a long time. She's been part of our, you know, our programs. Fatma is, is an inspiration. Yeah. Um, she, she older, she's always ready to give it out. Um, thank you so much for your time, Fatma. We really learned a lot. And, and I'm sure I can speak for all the um, participants today. Mm -hmm. uh, and to Betty, um, Betty, um, I think we we had a couple of discussions about Betty. The fact that she um, was ready to leave her comfort zone um, back in a way, um, take the risk. I mm -hmm. could say is a risk um, coming back to Gambia and working for Nawik, mm -hmm. which we all know um, Nawik now has not been um, the the strongest. So effectively, uh, sharing the wheels, um, leading one of the most critical functions in Nawik, I think it's, it's something that has been an inspiration to all of us, and we are all happy to associate with her. And, and of course, we're also happy to say within three or a couple of months, he's been able to register a couple of success. So Betty, thank you for joining, and thank you for sharing your experience. We really, we really appreciate this. Mm -hmm. And to Fatu Mata, um, she's a colleague, she's a friend. Um, we worked together a number of times. We, we fought, and, I, and I'm happy, you know, Fatu Mata, um, she, 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 she really, um, you know, made sure she, she achieved what she wanted. She was also very deliberate. So um, to, to the level of the CEO, I think it's, it's an inspiration. Thank you for coming on. And to all our participants, I think we've, we, we, we've been averaging about, about 30, 33. Um, I've seen people calling from the UK, um, um, from, from all over, from over the world. So thank you for connecting. And um, so we have a number of um, our colleagues, Facebook Live as well. Yeah. Um, thank you all for connecting. We, we will make sure we, um, I think to force the guys that have, participated today. I think we have learned. Um, we should just make sure we implement this um, in our lives, encourage our wives, encourage our sisters, our mothers, and all the ladies around us, and give them space to grow. Um, encourage ladies especially to, you know, pursue finance as a career. Mm -hmm. and, and we hope to work with all of you to ensure that at least we are able to form a, a permanent association of finance, which is um, only female focus um, so that like FATU is doing um, with St. Joseph's we can expand it to um, other institutions as well. 
Thank you so much. Thank you very much. And um, have a good weekend. Yeah.